In December, a woman named Gabrielle left a two-star review on Just Eat for her local KFC. This is what she said. I found a fried chicken head in my hot wings meal. Put me off the rest. Uh. Firstly, why a two-star review? I mean, what does that KFC have to do to get a one-star review? But secondly, and of course, more importantly, why did finding the chicken's head put Gabrielle off the rest of her food, especially as the rest of the food was also dead chickens and the rest of the food is exactly what she had ordered? These types of news stories pop up all the time and they perfectly illustrate just how disconnected we are from our food. We find a part of a dead animal in our meal. And what I mean by that, of course, is a part of a dead animal that we didn't want to find in our meal. And then that part of the dead animal puts us off eating all of the other dead animals that we were going to eat as part of that meal. But why is this the reaction that we have? And why did KFC deserve a bad review for literally doing what they were supposed to do, which is serve dead chickens to a customer who had ordered dead chickens. Now, of course you could say, well, she didn't order the chicken's head. She just ordered all the other body parts of the chicken. But that's not really the point, is it? The point is it put her off eating all of the other dead body parts that she was going to eat. So why is that? If you're ordering a dead chicken, then don't be flabbergasted or disgusted when you find out that you've actually been given a dead chicken. Well, before we dive in any deeper, I just want to tell you about the UK vegan campout, which is taking place from the 15th to the 18th of July at Stanford Hall in Leicestershire and is going to be the UK's biggest vegan event. I'm going to be one of the headline speakers for the event, which I'm very happy and excited about. And I'm also going to be DJing the final night after party as well, which should be a lot of fun. The tickets are selling fast though. In fact, there's only around 20% of the tickets left. So if you are interested, then you can buy a ticket now by clicking the link in my description. It's always a really fun event. And alongside me, other speakers include Ivana Lynch, Simon Amstel, Preacher Lawson. So lots of great speakers. There's gonna be lots of live music and lots and lots of great food. In fact, both No Catch and Unity Diner are going to be there this year. And we're all just so excited for the event itself. So I hope to see lots of you from the 15th to the 18th of July at the UK Vegan Campout. Let's get back to the story at hand. Now I get it. It must not be particularly appetizing to find a chicken's head in your food. And actually when I was younger, I had similar reactions to certain animal products as well. For example, I never liked eating chicken off the bone. I always found the bones and the tendons and the ligaments and those gristly bits really off-putting. And when I was much younger, I was eating a beef casserole and I took a bite out of a chunk of a cow. And when I took a bite out of that chunk, I found a vein running through the chunk. And from that moment on, I never liked beef casserole again. And I never liked eating prawns who still had their heads attached or fish who were served with their heads attached as well. There's just something so unnerving about their eyes just frozen in time. Their eyes are a snapshot in time from the moment when they were killed. Their hollow, vacant expression reminding us that once behind their eyes existed a sentient conscious individual, but now that conscious individual is no longer behind those eyes because we paid for them to be killed for us. And even though, of course, at that time, I wasn't consciously aware that the reason I found the heads disturbing was because they reminded me of the sentient individual who used to live within those heads. And even though at the time I didn't realize that chicken bones and veins in beef casserole were off-putting because they reminded me that I was eating what used to be a someone, a sentient individual, the truth is the reason I found these foods unappetizing and off-putting was precisely because by consuming them and seeing these aspects of their bodies, I was being forced to think about and consider even subconsciously who it was that I was consuming. And in effect, while finding a chicken head will have certainly been unappetizing for Gabrielle, the reason it will have been unappetizing is because by seeing the chicken head, she was forced to recognize, even if only subconsciously, that she wasn't just consuming fried chicken, she was consuming the fried body parts of chickens. In other words, she was consuming dead animals who had been killed because of the choices that she and so many others around her make every single day. And then of course, by having that subconscious reminder, we enter into some sort of moral conflict, even if we're not necessarily aware that that's happening. And the moral conflict will be something along the lines of, that's a chicken's head. I'm eating the body parts of animals 
but I think that I'm against animal cruelty and suffering. I call myself an animal lover, yet here I am eating the dead body parts of animals who are unnecessarily killed for me to consume that fried chicken. These are the internal conflicts that we have because our cognitive dissonance around what we do to animals runs so deep within us. And something like finding a chicken's head reminds us subconsciously of this conflict that exists every time we buy animal products. And the thing about fried chicken is that it's so visually removed from an actual chicken. A piece of fried chicken, of course, looks nothing like an actual chicken. And because visually it's so removed, it means that we don't have to make this connection with who it is that we are eating. I mean, of course, intellectually we might say, I know I'm eating a chicken, but emotionally we can disconnect from the actual reality of what that means. And because it's visually nothing like an actual chicken, it means that when we're tucking into that bucket or fried chicken sandwich, we're not actually consciously thinking about who it is that we are eating. And so by being emotionally as well as visually disconnected from the process of what we're supporting, it means that we can avoid the responsibility of having to morally justify it. But seeing the whole head with the eyes still in that head all of a sudden means that visually, we're not disconnected from the process. In fact, visually, we are fully connected with that process because we are literally looking into the eyes of an animal who is killed for us. Now, the problem is, whilst seeing that visual reminder and making that connection should lead us towards rationalizing our choices and then understanding that morally we shouldn't be paying for these things to happen to animals, what often happens, and of course happened in the case of Gabrielle, is that she blames it on KFC. Oh, it's KFC's fault. They've made me feel this way. Not her own moral intuition, not the moral conflict that's going on within her because of the reality of what she's supporting, but KFC are the ones to blame. And by placing the blame on KFC, see, it means that she doesn't have to recognize the moral conflict that's happening within her. And doesn't this just show us how deeply entrenched our cognitive distance towards animals really is? That in a moment where we're actually being shown something that's very important when determining our morals and our values, we instead try to deflect blame somewhere else because we're so desperate to continue living the way that we've always lived but with a continued guilt-free conscience. And this brings me to one of my favorite headlines of all time, taken from a Huffington Post article back in 2015. KFC customers shocked at finding chicken parts in their fried chicken. And look, this article seems far too absurd to not be self-aware. I mean, surely it must be self-aware, right? So I actually looked into the journalist to try and find out if maybe he was vegan, and this was some sort of subliminal message that he was putting into his articles. But actually, it seems like at that time, at least, he certainly wasn't vegan. In fact, he had a food blog where he would post non-vegan food. But surely this article must be self-aware. I mean, who could publish this headline and not think for a second, hang on a minute, this seems a bit ironic, doesn't it? But serious or not, this headline, of course, does perfectly point out the wider irony of the outrage that people express when they find dead animal parts in their dead animal meals. Because if we can't come literally face to face with the animals we have paid to have killed on our behalf, then that speaks volumes about how we actually feel about eating dead animals. And whilst these reactions are undeniably hypocritical, I also think that they're positive. I think it's positive that people become uncomfortable or are made squeamish when they find the head and face of an individual who is killed for them. I think it's positive because it shows there is some form of conflict that's arising as a consequence of seeing this individual's face. It's just now the case of making sure that that conflict is recognized and people understand that what they're dealing with is their own cognitive dissonance, not the fault of KFC, but the reality that they are made uncomfortable by coming face to face with a victim of their purchase. But in the end, while stories like this succeed in bringing out an emotional reaction in people, what we do to animals isn't simply an emotional issue. Because of course, whilst finding a head in our food is a very succinct way of showing how detached we have to be from the process of what we do to animals to make what we do to animals seem palatable, it actually overlooks the fact that what we do to animals is an intellectual concern. We shouldn't need visceral reminders per se to intellectually 
actually connect the dots. Fundamentally, all we need to recognize is that non-human animals like us are also sentient and conscious individuals who have subjective experiences, both positive and negative. And as soon as we recognize this, it becomes obvious to understand that morally speaking, it is of course morally wrong to inflict unnecessary suffering, harm, and death onto these sentient, conscious individual animals. And that fact will always remain, irrespective of whether we find a chicken's head or not. So that brings us to the end of the video. As always, thank you so much for watching. And do let me know down below in the comments what you thought of Gabrielle's review on Just Eat. And of course, what you think more generally of stories such as Gabrielle's, because I think they provide a very fascinating and interesting insight into our cognitive dissonance around what we do to animals. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.